Call of Duty Black Ops 7 has just been released, and today I'm going to show you guys how to get the absolute best performance and image quality, so you can go from this to this, as well as taking a look at the highest NPC to see how much performance we can get. So let's get straight into it. Before we get started, I want you guys to make sure that you download the latest game ready driver for your graphics card, whether it's from Nvidia, AMD, or Intel. And once that's done, go ahead and download the Black Ops 7 config files from my Google Drive. There will be two folders in here, one being the config optimized folder, which is a balance of graphics quality and performance. And the second folder is the max FPS config, which like the name suggests is purely for maximum performance. Here are what the config files look like. The left is going to be the config optimized and the right is going to be the max FPS config. So feel free to download whichever one fits your preference. And the last thing I recommend downloading is Vibrance GUI. This sort of program allows us to set digital vibrance on a per game basis so you can make the colors look much better in game. The links for everything will be in the description below and now on to the good stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the search bar and type in game mode settings and you're going to want to make sure that game mode is enabled here. So for those of you with dual CCD CPUs like a 7950X 3D or 9950X 3D, if this is not enabled, Windows can sometimes cause an issue where your main CCD0, which is the one with your 3DB cache, um, is not utilized in games. It could cause lower performance and 1% lows especially. So you're going to want to make sure that game mode is enabled here. Generally, even for Intel CPUs, it helps with uh, scheduling. So you could just turn this on. It'll make sure that the priority for the foreground tasks is scheduled for the main performance cores that you want to be utilized for games. And the other cores are utilized for background tasks. So turn this on. And then go to graphics. And there's going to be a list of games and applications in here that Windows will automatically find. And if it does it well, it'll say high performance. So if your Call of Duty is not showing up in here, you could just press browse, find where it's installed. So for me, it's in the F drive, Call of Duty, go to retail and then click cod.exe here. All right. And once it's added in here, click options, make sure that you have your high performance or discrete GPU enabled here and not your integrated or power saving or whatever other graphics card you have. So if you have like a integrated graphics card on a laptop or a desktop, make sure it's your actual dedicated GPU in here and press save. Once that's done, go to change default graphic settings. And then the first thing we're going to do is enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This is important if you play a lot of games with frame generation, especially. And it does help in certain games in GPU bun scenarios, especially in Battlefield 6 and Borderlands 4. This does actually help with performance. So I'll keep this enabled. However, if you do have issues and you're super heavily CPU bound and you want to see if this is causing the issue, you could turn it off. But for most people, you could just have this on. Variable refresh rate is fine. This works alongside G-Sync and FreeSync if you have that enabled in your um, for your monitor or your NVIDIA control panel or Adrenaline. This is basically just going to add VRR to legacy games like DirectX 11 or older titles that don't have native VRR support. So you can just have this enabled, no harm. This one's going to be the good one, uh, optimization for windowed games. So for those of you who are playing on borderless windowed mode, this is actually going to help reduce latency and it's going to be quite comparable to even full screen exclusive, maybe 0.5 milliseconds trade off plus or minus. But yeah, it's 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 just, just good if you're playing on full screen borderless and like to alt tab out of games so you can keep this on. And real quick, we're also going to take a look at the NVIDIA control panel settings. So first thing you're going to do, you can just copy all this stuff if you want. Um, monitor technology, I use G-Sync, but if you don't want to and you want the absolute lowest latency, I think G-Sync and V-Sync plus Reflex adds like maybe slightly, maybe one milliseconds of input lag uh, measured on frame view. However, if you just want the absolute best input lag, you can keep uh, ref fixed refresh. The other important thing is shader cache size. So this, I would uh, suggest everyone keep at 10 gigs. However, if you play a lot of games, and I mean like a wide variety of games, and they are all shader caching on Unreal Engine 5, many multiplayer games, and you have the storage space, keep 100 gigs. And in here, you can just copy the rest. If you do have G-Sync compatible here, you're going to want to enable ver vertical sync as well. Now, this is not the same as the vertical sync in game. You're going to want to keep that off. But in the NVIDIA control panel, for G-Sync and V-Sync to work properly, like you need to have both enabled. This is not going to give you that super heavy uh, input lag penalty that you're thinking of right now. If you, if you are unaware of this technique, you can go to Blurbusters and read up on the article on how G-Sync and V-Sync work. It'll give you basically all of the answers that. Uh, you're probably wondering about and alongside with nvidia reflex in the game cutting down the latency it's it's the best combo if you do want a tear free experience with minimal input lag so that's all going to be that's going to be all the important ones for nvidia control panel 
And the only other thing you want to make sure if you're using G-Sync is make sure that it's checked here for enable settings for a selected display model. So it's actually working. And over here in change resolution, make sure your monitor's refresh rate is actually the full refresh rate. I've had so many people I've helped had theirs at 60 hertz when they had like 144 or 240 hertz for months or even years. So make sure that this is set correctly as well. And that's going to be it for the NVIDIA control panel settings. Now let's move on to the config files. All right, so once you've downloaded the config files that you prefer, go ahead and open it up. So in my case, it's going to be the max FPS config. But keep in mind that whatever I show you in here is also going to apply for the config optimized. So you could follow along as well. So go ahead and open up TXT0 and TXT1. These are both going to be read by the game. And whatever changes we make in TXT0 have to be exactly the same in TXT1. So for TXT0, the first thing we're going to do is press Control F and type in renderer and click enter. It's going to take you to this thread count for handling job queue command render worker count in here. The reason why it's seven is because by default, um, if you have an eight core CPU like I do, you want you're going to want to put eight minus one, which is seven. It's the same as all the other previous COD games for the last five years. And um, the, the way this works is you need to take your CPUs, physical cores and minus one. So if you don't know which CPU you have or which CPU cores you have, you could just open up task manager in here. Go to performance, CPU, and you can see right here the cores and logical processors, but you can just focus on the cores. It's eight, all right? So take your physical cores and minus one. So if you have a six core CPU, put five. If you have a quad core CPU, also put five because going lower than uh, five will cause issues for the game where you get worse 1% lows and average FPS. So you're always going to want to put five regardless of if you have quad core or six core. And then for those of you with eight core, just keep seven. It's going to be seven by default when you download it. So you don't actually have to change it if you have uh, eight core CPU. And for those of you who have something like a 9950X 3D, 7950X 3D, and you're wondering like that, that's a 16 core CPU. It is, but those 16 cores are split between two CCDs. Each CCD has eight cores. And so the game only uses one CCD, right? So you're still going to put seven in here, even if you have a 7950X 3D or 9950X 3D. So make sure that's set in here. Now, the older CODs, uh, we would go in here and disable heaps. But for some reason, Black Ops 7 is incredibly GPU bound this time. And so I've made sure that both the config files have GPU heaps at true. This does help with C uh, GPU performance because we are GPU bound in this game. So make sure that for whatever reason, if you don't have this enabled to true, uh, make sure it is true. The, that's going to be it for this. And you're going to do the exact same thing in here. Press control F heaps, make sure it's true. Type in renderer and make sure it's seven. And they have actually changed the spot where you're actually uh, going to paste this. Cause before it would be documents, call of duty players, and you'd put it like in here. However, in both the Xbox game pass and battle.net, this is not where the game is reading the config files anymore. So you're going to want to take this, all right? Type in run, okay, and then click percentage local app data, or not click, type percentage local app data percentage and press OK. And it's going to take you to this uh, app data local, Activision, Call of Duty, players, and you're going to paste your files in here. You're already going to have three in here. Just paste it in and replace those files. And that's it for the config files. So now I'm going to show you what the um, performance looks like between everything we've just done so far in Windows and the config files. So you can see before we do any of the graphics settings and all the other stuff, what the uh, performance gains are like. Here is the benchmark two result without the tweaks that we just did and using 1440p DLSS performance transformer model at the lowest in-game settings. We have an average of 155 FPS, which is very decent. Now taking a look at the after tweaks result, utilizing the max FPS config tweaks along with the Windows tweaks, we can see an uplift of 12% on the average FPS going from 155 to 174. So there are definitely some performance gains to be had with the config files beyond the lowest settings available in the game. And since we're already in the game, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the settings. All right, once you're in the game, go ahead and come over here to the top right and click graphics. For the display mode, I prefer using full screen borderless because I like to alt tab out of my games. However, feel free to use whichever one you like. And because we did the optimize for windowed mode and game mode, there's going to be negligible input lag with using full screen borderless. So don't worry too much about that. Next, for display monitor, make sure it's your main monitor of choice that you're going to be playing the games on. For display adapter, it's going to be your dedicated graphics card. So if you have two choices here, make sure it's the correct graphics card so you get the max performance. And then for here, because we're playing on borderless uh, full screen, it's going to use the resolution refresh rate of Windows. 
So if you do want to set that manually, you're going to have to use full screen exclusive and make sure that it's on auto or the highest refresh rate available for your monitor. Same with the resolution. Make sure it's the highest resolution available. And then you're going to scroll down to NVIDIA Reflex. Actually, let's do gamma brightness first. I prefer using 60% out of 100 for the brightness. Um, you could use 50. That's the default. However, play around with this and uh, whatever helps with visibility will be the best for you. And then go back to NVIDIA Reflex. So by default, it's going to be on on, which is good because on is for GPU bound scenarios, which this game is still most likely going to be for a majority of us. Um, so keep it on. And then if you are heavily CPU bound, though, you could do on plus boost. This means that it, you will get a slight cut to the FPS, but you will have much better input lag if you're really struggling to get a playable experience. So experiment with these two, depending on if you're GPU bound or CPU bound and see what kind of results you get. Then come down here to custom frame rate limit and make sure that you actually put your average FPS that you're getting while playing games consistently. If you want to find out real quick what your average FPS is, just click the benchmark here and run the benchmark tool. It's going to be that screenshot of uh, the results I showed you before this section. And on the top left here, you'll see your average FPS. And then you come back here. Make sure you go to show more in the custom frame rate limit. And then just put your custom frame rate here. It's going to help with frame pacing, frame time consistency, input lag. And just it's going to be smoother overall if you lock your FPS. So go ahead and do that here. Menu frame rate, just keep the same as this if you want uh, the smoother menu. And then out of focus, just keep 30 because you're all tabbing out of the game. You don't need it to be high frame rate. The rest of this stuff is personal preference. I just keep it optimal, off, off, focus mode zero, and high dynamic range off. Then for the quality tab. So for you NVIDIA guys, I highly suggest you use NVIDIA DLSS at the transformer model. This is going to give you a good balance of image quality and performance. And for the preset, I am using performance, which is 720p internally. However, you could use balanced or quality based on your preference. I think performance looks just fine for multiplayer. And if you do want a better image quality, though, bump it up to balanced or quality if you have a higher, uh, more, more performant graphics card. For you AMD guys, I highly suggest if you don't have a 9000 series that you use FSR 3, start with balanced and then go uh, below to performance if you need more performance and then go up if you need more image quality. The same thing applies for Intel XCSS. Start with balanced and then go down to performance and then go up. Uh, go down to performance for more frame rate and then go up to quality if you need more image quality. And then now for the Fidelity FX cast, we've been using this for the last three CODs for native resolution and sharpening. This in this game, for some reason, looks blurry in motion. I don't know why that is, and especially variable rate shading as well. This looks horrendous in this game. I don't know what they did with Fidelity FX Cast and variable rate shading, but it is not usable in my opinion, because as soon as you start moving, even with the example I'm going to show you after this, I'm going to show you a comparison between all of the important upscalers. It might look sharp when you're standing still, but trust me, when you're moving around, it does get blurry even at 1440p. So for this game, I highly suggest using the upscaler that your graphics vendor allows. For the RTX guys, just use DLSS transformer model. If you have an older RTX card, like a 2060, 3060, and you need uh, more graphics performance, if you're GPU bound and need more FPS, use CNN. This is going to give you a higher FPS output than transformer model. It's going to look slightly worse, but if you're pressed for performance, then that's what you have to do. Transformer model is the latest DLSS 4 upscaler. It has better image quality and better like image retention and less ghosting. So for right now, this is the best um, for upscalers as far as that, that goes. And now we're going to look at a comparison between all of them so you can see what I'm talking about. On the leftmost side, we have native 1440p Fidelity FX CAS. Next, we have 1440p DLSS Performance Transformer model. Then we have 1440p FSR 3 performance. And finally, 1440p XCSS performance. Like I said earlier, I do think DLSS 4 Transformer model is the way to go in this game. You are getting highly comparable image quality to even native 1440p, and your performance is significantly higher as well. Keep in mind that this is the performance mode uh, for all the upscalers. So it's 720p internally, and I did this on purpose just to showcase their deficiencies at range. In terms of image stability, DLSS 4 does take the crown in my opinion, even over native 1440p Fidelity FX CAS. However, you should experiment with all of these based on your resolution and frame rate target for the best overall experience. Now for the config files that I've had you guys download, if you have the max FPS config like I am, everything is going to be set to the lowest settings already in here, which is fine because the config files also um, affect the in-game graphics settings. However, if you have the optimized settings, everything in here is going to be different based on the graphics quality changes. So 
the the config optimize is obviously a balance of visuals and performance. So if you do use that config file, everything will be set in here. You don't have to touch any of the graphic settings. It'll be the optimal way for visuals and performance. Speaking of visuals and performance, let's do a final performance comparison using a mid-range PC and a high-end PC. On the left side, we have 1440p default settings, which is what the game defaults to on first launch. Then we have 1440p DLSS config optimized settings. And finally, 1440p DLSS max FPS config settings. You can see that we largely kept most of the graphics quality using the config optimized settings, with only a few differences in shading quality and volumetrics taking a hit. In my opinion, it looks 80% as good as the default settings, which were set mostly to high by the game. For the max FPS config, we are losing out on texture resolution, shadow quality, shader quality, and more. However, the performance gains are substantial, especially if you have a more powerful graphics card than the RTX 4060 I'm using here. I do recommend using DLSS4 Transformer model and FSR4 if you have a compatible graphics card, as this will give you the best balance of image quality and performance overall. Next up is the high-end PC with a Ryzen 9800X 2 d and an RTX 5090. The performance scale is even higher because, well, it's an RTX 5090. But even then, I didn't expect this game to fully utilize it, especially since Black Ops 6 was heavily CPU bound. And it seems to be flipped for this game where both my graphics cards wore the bottleneck, even when using DLSS performance. That is to say that overall, this game does perform very well generally, and I do hope that this time there is little to no performance regression as the seasonal updates release. The only way to mitigate the performance loss with each season is to tune up your PC, and that does help with keeping stable average FPS and 1% lows, and especially any dev errors and crashing that can occur. And since we're on the topic of tuning up PCs, if you have similar parts or even the same parts as you see on screen, and you're not getting the performance you should be, then hit me up on Discord. I provide PC tuning services, and we can go over the BIOS, Windows, CPU, and GPU in terms of overclocking and undervolting to get the most performance out of it, as well as fix any crashing, stuttering, and general instability. If you're planning on building a new PC or upgrading, I highly suggest you hit me up on Discord because I can help you choose the right parts so that you don't bottleneck your system too heavily, and also tune it up so that we could squeeze the most performance out of it. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the final part of the video, which is improving the in-game colors with Vibrance GUI. Alright, so once you've downloaded Vibrance GUI, go ahead and double-click this EXE and open it up. So this is just going to be a standalone executable file where you can put anywhere. It's not an installer or anything. And once it's open, you can click Auto Start with Vibrance GUI, Effect Primary Monitor only, and never change resolutions. So this will make it so that Vibrance GUI auto starts with Windows down here in the tray so that you don't have to do anything extra. So what this program does is it lets you adjust Vibrance level on a per application or game basis. So I've added a few games in this tray. So this is what people used to do like back in the uh, NVIDIA control panel method where you would go in here, click adjust desktop color settings, and then you adjust digital vibrance here. The problem is this affects the entire windows and you typically would not want that if you're doing a wide variety of productivity or media tasks or whatever. So you could just do it on a per game basis now. So like, for example, for Call of Duty, I have it at 70%. For Battlefield, I have it at 80%. For Overwatch, I have it at 60 And you could just see that it's whatever, it allows a lot of control on an individual game basis. And the way you add games in here is by clicking add manually, go to where your game is installed. So for example, for me, Call of Duty is in the F drive and then go to retail, scroll down to where you find COD.exe, double click it and it'll get added in here. Double click this and then set your digital vibrance level to whatever you want. I prefer uh, 70%. So that's what I like. And you can click save. And once that's done, you could just minimize it and it'll just be down here. You don't, once it's set, you don't have to do anything more. And now I'll show you what it looks like side by side in game. On the left side, we have Vibrance GUI set to off or 50%, which is the default, as well as the in game brightness at 50, again, which is the default. And on the right, we have Vibrance GUI set to 70% and the in game brightness at 60. You can immediately see a noticeable difference to the colors and brightness overall, which does look better in my opinion. Adding color vibrancy can also improve the perceived brightness of the world, which can enhance visibility. Vibrance GUI also does not have any performance cost, especially compared to something like the NVIDIA Game Filters or RTX Dynamic Vibrance. Those are very good for improving visibility, but they can take off up to 15 to 30 FPS depending on a GPU load, which is not ideal. Now, I've been using Vibrance GUI for almost a decade, and it's still the most efficient and effective compared to anything else I've tried. However, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below if you guys know of anything better. I'm always happy to try new things out and even include them in future videos so that more people can enjoy it. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If this guide helped you out, let me know down in the comment section below. And while you're down there, you can help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe so you don't miss more guides like this, especially for Warzone and Blackout with Season 2. I'll see you in the next one.